Hi, welcome to section 4. In this section, we are going to be focusing on circular references. And similar to what we did in the previous section, we will be talking about uh, what causes circular references, uh, what are the impact of uh, circular references on your data model, and how we can fix these. But before that, and in addition to circular references, we are also going to take a look at some examples of loading data from different types of data sources. So the first one that we are going to talk about is the database example that I talked to you about in the previous uh, videos. I said that we will take a look at an example of loading from a database. So we are going to do that right now. So let's go into ClickSense. And uh, before we start loading data from uh, the database, I just want to show you here what I have done is I have used the data sources for ODBC. And what I have done here is I've added the connection. Just let me open that up again. I have added the connection to my access file in here under system DSN. And uh, when you do this, all you need to do is click on the add button and then you will be able to give a name to your data source and browse to select the data source that you have or uh, you want to connect to. Also remember to know what type of file that you're using because these are new files that we have for access. So if you click on add, you will be able to see the driver for MDB as well as ACCDB. That's the new database format. So just uh, select this and then uh, browse to the file that you want to select and give your connection a name. Once you've done that, that's pretty much all you need to add your connection into the data sources list and yeah, so here you just give it a name and that's all you need to do. And then you will see your connection in the data sources. Now, the reason that this is a very easy way is that uh, when you go to ClickSense, you will then be able to directly add this data source as a connector, which makes your work a lot more easier. So when you click on create new connection, you go look for ODBC. That's what I'm doing here. I'm connecting to my ODBC or obviously you need to look for any other connector if that's what you're trying to do. So you click on ODBC and you will be able to see my data source here, my data for ClickSense. If there is a need for you to put in a username and password, depending on the kind of connection you have, you may need to do that. But if not, just leave it blank. And then you can change the name of the connector if you need to. Here, I'm not changing any name for my connector. This is just exactly the name that I would like to have. So I click on create. And now before we start loading data, I just want to let you know here that when you load the data, Make sure that uh, you do some research before you connect to your data source because some of the data sources you just know how to connect to while others are new and you haven't really worked with them before. So it's a good idea for you to do a quick uh, research and uh, make sure that you know what is the information required before you're getting connected and also have an idea about uh, commonly known issues related to your connector if there are any and also workarounds. So the community here is quite active for Click, so you would be able to see people sharing information about issues they faced and what did they do eventually to fix them. And I think that comes in to be really, really helpful for us. So let's get started with the loading data. I'm putting in my comment here. loading data from database. Now I need to click on select data and I'm loading my first table. There are a number of tables in my access file here, but I'm not loading all of it right now. We'll take it step by step and I'm loading invoice info as my first table so that we can then take a look at the script. So this is the script that you have for your data load editor for loading data from a database. You have an SQL statement, a select statement that selects the data from the table that you specified. And then there's a load statement, which actually takes all that data then and loads it into ClickSense. There's a library connect, which is actually initiating the connection to your database using the connector that you have configured on the right hand side here. Okay. So now all you need to do is load the data, make sure that there are no errors and then we can move on to our next table. So we just need to make sure that the data load progress window is done successfully and then close. And now I'm adding another table here. So I'm going to go click on this select data and I will be able to choose from my list product. That's my second table and I'm going to click on insert script. So it looks the same. There is a SQL select and there is a load a statement to be able to load the information from my table. Now let me click on load data. 
and again we need to make sure that there are no errors so that we can move on oh but now you can see there is a problem here i have a synthetic key i'm going to need to fix that so i'm going to go to my tab so again i just want to recommend that if you are going to keep swapping between the script and the data model keep the data model open on a separate tab so that you can easily swap between the two so what's happened here is that I have now two columns between uh, products and invoice info, which is quite understandable because I have product ID and there is unit price. So unit price has to be with products and of course it's included in the invoice information as well. But this doesn't work with ClickSense. So we need to go figure out what we can do with this. I'm going to leave out unit price from the products table and I'll leave it there as it is in the invoice info and that should fix my problem. In addition to that, you will also see that I have no connectivity between invoice info and invoices. Uh, that's what I should be having a link between. So if you go see the key column here in invoice info, the key column name is invoice ID. But in my invoices table, the key column name is invoice number. So I need to go fix that as well. So let's start with the synthetic key first again. I'm going to zoom in for you to take a look at this. I need to comment out unit price in both of my scripts in the SQL select as well as in the load statement. So you have unit price, you just comment it out. And then the next thing I want to do here is I want to rename the column. So I'm renaming the column for my invoice ID. When you make changes again, you should remember to do it on the SQL select. So I rename here as invoice number. And then I will be able to use the new column name in my load statement. So let me go change that. And I'm done with all the changes that I need to make. Now, once I'm ready to load my script, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to click on load data. So when you click on load data again, we look at the data progress window and hopefully we shouldn't have any trouble here and everything should be done very easily and quickly. That looks good. Let's go take a look at the data model and uh, seems like data model is forming really nicely now. I just want to highlight these key points that you must remember. When you have different types of databases, there are different ways of connecting to them and you may need different types of information. Sometimes you need service accounts, some username, passwords. So be prepared. Um, as I said, do some research, find out about what information is required to connect to your data source if you have never connected before. And also try and find out some of the commonly known issues that uh, come along with this type of connectivity, uh, if there are any. And then, of course, if you start looking at these issues and trying to find out about these commonly known issues, you'll also come across some of the solutions that people have used in order to fix them. And I think that that's very informative and very useful for us to be able to get started with, especially when we are connecting to a data source that's completely new to us. Okay, so that's about it with our first video.